Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Already on to the third lesson of this chapter, uh, lesson 1.1.3. This lesson is called Algebra Walk, but unfortunately, if you're watching this video, it means that you are not able to do the activity with us uh, outside the classroom, but it's okay because you're going to get the basic idea uh, just by viewing this video. Um, and for us, let's get started with the idea of uh, what are we talking about here? What is it we're going to be doing? Well, we're going to be working with a coordinate grid. And if you recall from seventh and maybe sixth grade, coordinate grids are made up of an X and a Y axis. So the horizontal axis and the vertical axis, and it breaks up the, the graph into four quadrants. Um, this is considered quadrant one, uh, where both the X values and the Y values are positive numbers. This is the one where we generally live in the most. Um, then you got quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, and I can't uh, fully explain to you why they chose to go counterclockwise for the numbering system, uh, but they did, and I think it has something to do with the fact that uh, this was uh, developed by a mathematician philosopher by the name of Rene Descartes. I think it's Descartes. There might be an S. No, I'm pretty sure it's Descartes like that. And um, it's often referred to as the Cartesian coordinate plane and Cartesian uh, starts with the letter C and if you think of that going around starting in quadrant one where all numbers are positive and then working your way around in the form of a C that's how I always remembered it uh, I don't know if that was the plan from the beginning when someone decided to label each one of those with a Roman numeral but that works for me okay so that's uh, if you ever like in high school I know in eighth grade I'm not going to test you on which quadrant is, is which, like that's the third quadrant. I'm not going to give you any quiz or test that had that question on it. So I don't know if high school does, but uh, they, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But at any rate, we're going to be working in this quadrant most of the time when we're doing problem solving. But for just generic algebra, we use all four quadrants. And so the way that this works is you would uh, take your rule, and then you plug in your input variable. So for uh, if, if you plug in a one here, then what is one plus two? It's equal to three. What if we put two there, then two plus two gives you a four. And if you put in the three for X, then three plus two gives you five. Now these become ordered pairs where the X is listed first, right? Your X, Y coordinates. So the X is listed first and the Y is listed second. So Point one three would be located right around here. Uh, point two four, right? Two four would be located two four right here, and point three five would be located three one two three four somewhere around there. And in some circumstances, you would connect the dots and form a straight line. In other circumstances, and we're going to learn those uh, this year. Other circumstances, you would leave uh, them as just points. So this is the idea of what we're going to be working with today. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some trends uh, between different types of rules to determine which ones form straight lines, which direction do those lines go in, uh, and which ones form uh, what we would call nonlinear um, rules or nonlinear functions because they don't form a straight line. All right. So here we go. Today you will use an XY coordinate system refer to the locations of specific points in the form x, y, where the x always comes first in the ordered pair and the y comes second. By the end of this lesson, you sure, uh, be sure you and your teammates know the answers to the following questions. Well, you're not working with teammates right now. You're just uh, viewing this on your own, so you make sure that you uh, reflect on these target questions. How can you plot a point using x, y coordinates? How can you name a point on the graph, and how can you describe a pattern formed by the points? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We are not going to focus on any of that up there, okay? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these rules, and we are going to fill out a table of values where x is uh, 
are the integers between negative six and positive six on the number line. And so we'll plug those numbers into each rule and we'll write down the outputs or the y values. And then we're going to graph those on a coordinate grid. So um, I don't think there's any need for you to copy this down right now because I've changed uh, how all this looks. And we'll start with this one right here. Okay. So you're going to have to make five different graphs. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and take a little bit of time. Every one of your graphs is going to look the same. And the only thing that's going to be different is we're going to change the rule. And remember, we got five different rules here that we're going to go with. First one we're working with is 2x plus 1. So as you create these graphs, it is very, very important. Use a ruler. Use graph paper. Hopefully you've got graph paper. If you've just got regular lined paper, um, you could use the blue lines in the lined paper for your x or for your y-axis spacing, but you got to make sure that you space things out properly on your x-axis. That's why using regular writing paper is not ideal for math anymore. You know, when we were in elementary school, that worked just fine. But now that you're having to graph a lot, it's really a good idea to have coordinate grid paper. Okay. So what I want you to do, and let's do this one together. And I'll show you exactly, I'll model this for you. And then we've got y equals negative 2x. So we're going to do y equals x plus 4. We're going to do y equals negative x plus 4. And then the last one, y equals x squared. And while we're doing this, we'll be looking for patterns to see what our graphs look like. Okay. But let's do the first one together so you've got an idea of what we need to do. Okay, so what I'm going to start off with is I'm just going to uh, do a little mental math here. I'm going to take this number in my x column, in my input column, and I'm going to plug it in here. And this means if it's 2x, it means 2 times x. 2x's in this case would be 2 negative 6's, which would be, right, negative uh, 12. Negative 12 plus 1 gives us negative 11. And we would write that input in. Okay? Uh, what's the next one? Negative 5, when you pull that, it's negative 10. Plus 1 is negative 9. Uh, negative 4, you double it, it's negative 8. Plus 1 is negative 7. And I'm already starting to see a pattern emerge. What what happens every single time? Looks like it goes down by two, correct? Or no, it increases by two because those are negative numbers. Uh, so this would be negative three. This would be negative one. This would be positive one. Now I don't want to just trust that this pattern is correct. I better double check a couple of these. So let me take negative two. If I double it, that's negative four. And then I add 1 to negative 4, and I get negative 3 for an answer. Absolutely. What about 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1? Yes, that is the correct pattern. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of those, because I know that this pattern is going to be consistent throughout. Because I tested it. Okay? So. Now what we want to do, and this is where the algebra walk comes in. This is what you would have done if uh, you were in class working through this activity. Uh, notice how we got five people here. Uh, I should actually put these guys on the other side, but that's fine. Uh, this person is the, uh, the purple person, and he is going to stand on negative two. This person is going to stand on negative one. This person's going to stand where we're at zero. This person's going to stand at one. And this person's going to stand at two. Now, each one of these people has an output number. And when I say go, they're supposed to walk to their output number. Okay? So, for instance, uh, we're all ready. Everyone remembers what their output number was where they were standing and then I say go and negative two walks backwards to negative three. Uh, the green guy walks backwards to negative one. Uh, the red guy walks up to positive one. Then the blue guy walks up to three and the orange fella walks all the way up to five, right? Okay, so 
what do you notice about those points? Let me go ahead and darken those points. And there's a point here, there's a point there, this person's standing there, this person's standing there, and this person is standing there. Describe what you see. Well, first off, did I do that in red? First off, it looks like it's a straight line. What else do you notice? Well, looks like it, as you read it from left to right, it goes up. Okay, so when you're reading it left to right, if you were reading it from right to left, you could say it goes down, but we'll just say it's going up. Let's read our graphs from left to right, just like we would read a book from left to right, okay? Anything else that you can state there? Um, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you could talk about, you know, the relative steepness, but without comparing it to others, maybe it's kind of hard to explain how steep that line is. But that's the gist of what we're going to be doing today, okay? So what I'm going to do is we're going to do one at a time now. Let's move on to the next one. Remember, you can pause at any moment throughout this video, and you can fill things in in your journal and, and plot these points, okay? Um, I'll just I'll continue moving and assume that you will pause as you need to to catch up. Okay, so here we go with uh, same table of values, but now you got y is equal to negative 2x. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take every one of these x values and double them and then take the opposite of that, right? Remember last year when we multiplied integers together, a negative times a negative gave you a positive answer, and a negative times a positive gave you a negative answer. So what I'd like for you to do now for this one is just go ahead, fill in this table of values, and then take your, uh, you, don't, you don't really have to draw the people, you can just plot the points, okay? I'll do it just for fun, uh, but you go ahead and plot those points on your graph, and look to see what, what the graph looks like. It'd be interesting to see how this one compares to this one. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna pause, you go ahead and pause, and when, uh, when you come back, when you unpause, I'll have everything ready, and you can go ahead and check to see if yours is the same as mine. Alrighty, let's take a look and see what you got. Uh, here we've got all of our ordered pairs. Uh, when negative 6 yielded uh, an output of positive 12, because you double it and take the opposite. Uh, let's see, 3 yielded negative 6, because you double the number and then take the opposite, right? That's what's happening when you multiply times negative 2. And so this ended up being the graph. You had all these guys uh, where I would have had them lining up on their respective numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then they would walk to their output number. And what happens? What do you see? Well, this one is also a straight line, just like the previous example. Uh, what's different about it? Well, it's going in a different direction. This one goes down when you read it from left to right. And one other thing that I noticed that was different about this graph compared to the previous one, this one uh, didn't pass through the origin. It passed through where, uh, where x was equal to 0, y was equal to 1. In this case, it passes through the origin, which is zero, zero. Okay, so uh, once again, if you are making sure you do these graphs on coordinate grid paper and you're using your ruler and you're properly scaling your number lines, you should have these accurately graphed and they should form a straight line. Okay, so far, both of these have formed straight lines. All right, moving on to the next one. Go ahead and copy down the details, uh, do your graph, I'll pause for you, you pause, and uh, when we unpause again, we'll check and see what we've got. All right, let's see how you did on this one. So this rule says y is equal to x plus 4, so whatever the value for x is, y has to be 4 more than that. So we're just going to add 4 to each one of these, and you see our table of values here, now all of our guys would have started on, on their normal starting spots, and then when I said go, they would walk to a new location. So the negative 2 went to 2, 
the negative one went to three, the negative zero went to four, the one went to five, and the two went to six. Now, notice what this has in common with our first graph is that it's a straight line, just like the first graph was. That bothers me a little bit. I don't like the, there we go. Uh, it's, a, it's a straight line like the first graph. Uh, and it goes up from left to right. But one thing I noticed that I didn't write about in the previous graph is these guys are spaced closer together, right? It doesn't appear to be as steep as a line. If you think about this, there's only between uh, the purple guy and the green guy, there's only like a space of one, where when we go back to the first one, there was a space of two in between each one of those. So I think I'm going to include that. Uh, these guys appear to be spaced two apart. And I could say the same thing here, even though they're going in a different direction, they are spaced two apart as well. So I'll go ahead and write that there. Spaced two apart. Okay. So far, three graphs, each one of them formed a straight line. The two that had went up from left to right, what do their rules have in common? Something to think about a little bit. And the one that went down, what is different about this one compared to the others? This is the kind of thing where when we're in class, we can have these discussions. We can talk a little bit about this and bounce ideas off of members in our group. I'll get to it in a little bit, uh, but I want you thinking about it. What do you notice? The ones that have certain things in common, what do they have in common in their rules as well? All right, so here we go with the fourth graph. Copy down that rule. This will be interesting to see how this guy compares to this guy. Just notice uh, they both have a four being added on at the end. But this one says to take the opposite of x before adding 4 to it. Whereas this one, we never took the opposite of x. We just added 4 in the first place. Okay? So go ahead, uh, copy down this information, create another table, create another graph, use your ruler, be nice and neat. If you need to take a break because your hand is hurting because you're doing a lot of writing, go get a drink of water, go flex your hand, give yourself a hand massage. Um, but make sure you do this as neat and orderly as possible because it won't have the right effect if your graph is sloppy and it's not, and you're not plotting your points in the appropriate locations. Okay, uh, I'll pause, you pause. When we come back, we'll see the results. Alrighty, so what do we notice here? Oh, I didn't do a big reveal there. Okay, that's fine, you can just read it. Um, so, how does this compare to the previous one? Straight line, just like the previous one. Spaced one apart, just like the previous one. But instead of going up from left to right, it's going down from left to right. So, notice the difference between those. In fact, you might even notice both of them cross over the y-axis at the exact same point. Right? They both cross over where y is equal to 4, x is equal to 0, that might be something interesting to consider as we move forward too. Okay, so far, four rules, all of them were examples of linear equations or linear functions, because after you plotted the points from your table, they formed a straight line. If you put your ruler and you connected the dots, they would form a straight line. Okay, now for the last one. This one says y equals x squared. So what you have to do when you square a number, remember, you multiply it times itself. So I'll get you started on this. I'll do the first two. Negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Okay? Go ahead, fill in the rest of the table, plot those points on the graph, and describe what you see. Alrighty, so looks a little bit different than the other graphs, doesn't it? Notice how um, your output, when you squared a number, you multiplied it times itself, so it was impossible to have any negative outputs. That's one thing that I found interesting from the table here. 
Uh, when your input was a negative, a negative times a negative gave you a positive output. When your input was a positive, a positive times positive equals a positive. So your outputs are always going to be positives. And now notice how they're not forming a straight line anymore. All the other four graphs were straight lines, but this one is not a straight line. This shape is, uh, is actually U-shaped. And you call that a, uh, you call that a parabola. P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A -A. And that falls in the category of non-linear as far as functions go. That's a non-linear type of a function or equation. Uh, what else did I notice about this? Uh, the point is pointing up, right? I'm wondering if there's ever a time where this graph might actually go down instead of going up. That's something worth considering, but this one is definitely pointed up, and the bottom of the U is, is down here at the uh, at the origin. And the spacing I noticed was a little bit different. In the others, it was like they were either spaced one apart or they were spaced two apart. But in this case, they start off, these three are spaced one apart, right? But then you start getting three apart. And then can you imagine, you see how far it would be, the next one would be five apart, and then seven apart, and then nine apart, and then 11 apart. Remember when we were doing the uh, tile uh, figures, figure one, two, and three, and you had that first one we did where the, uh, the change between the number of tiles for each one increased by two every single time? Well, there's something going on here with that as well, okay? So, these are the different types of graphs that we'll be working with this year. This type, we won't get to until toward the end of the year. And when I say we won't get to it, we'll be solving problems that involve nonlinear type situations by, when we get to, like, Chapter 8 uh, or Chapter 9. For the most part, most of the problem solving that we're going to do are going to involve these particular graphs that form straight lines when you plot the points. Straight line. And what do we do? Space two apart there. There you go. Straight line. All right. So these are all examples, ones of the straight lines of working with linear functions or linear equations, or just plain linear rules. All right? Are you ready for that? Just remember, whenever you need to graph any sort of a rule, you can start by plotting the appropriate points into a table. You don't necessarily have to go from negative 6 all the way to positive 6. You could have just chosen this section of the table right here. In fact, a lot of times, people will just choose like 0, 1, 2, and 3 and, and plot four points. That would have worked as well. You'd have done this one, this one, this one, and then one up here. Totally okay to graph. Any one of those points would have been fine, okay? Uh, but we'll be working more with this throughout the year, and you'll be using these types of graphs to help us solve problems uh, when we get to that point. All right. Good job. Take care. And please, when the homework asks you to create a graph, it really is in your best interest to create the graph. You need to be experts at this. This is one of those things where Del Oro, they're going to expect their incoming freshmen next year to know exactly how to graph any one of these situations. And if you choose not to do it because you don't like graphing and it's a lot of work, you're going to fall behind. You're not going to know what to do, and that's going to affect you in high school. So all the directions on your homework. If it asks you to create a graph, please create a graph. Okay, take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good.